We keep stressing the fact that obviously, you know, you have to compete with discipline and you have to be disciplined and do things the right way, plus compete hard at the same time. So those are things we're working on and I think we're getting better. Good to see you. Can't we all just get along? Like warm weather during August, shoving matches in training camp are the norm. The Warhawks working out in shells bright and early this morning. Practice day turned up a notch. Certainly more than the last two days with the shoulder pads on, allowing for a little bit more contact to take place. One note on the defense, senior Trey Hunter split time between the first and second string today. No demotion for the senior. Rather, uh, defensive coordinator Mike Collins wanted Hunter in the role of coach on the field with the younger guys in the secondary. Brews on up the White Sulphur Springs. Another day of Saints training camp, but a different point of view from Drew Brees. More on that in a sec. Sean Payton praised a defense that didn't include Kenny Vaccaro, Jarius Bird, or Delvin Bro. Rookie corner Ken Crawley and safety Eric Harris both being on the receiving ends of two interceptions. However, both of those passes coming from Brees, who called today the worst training camp practice he's ever had. He ended this morning's workout with four INTs. After a disastrous 2015 campaign that ended with the Warhawks only getting two wins, everybody, no doubt, are thrilled to put that behind them. Players checking in today, getting their locker assignments and equipment, also moving into their apartments. Coach Matt Viator and company meeting with players as preparation for the start of the 2016 season gets underway. With a lot changing from last August to now, we had the chance to ask a couple of players the difference in the team's attitudes as they prep for a new season under a different coach. Brooke, you know, with any new coaching change, you're going to see players transfer and leave the program. What new additions have you guys brought in so far? We've brought in a couple of players, uh, transfer from Elon, Nikki McDonald. She'll be a sophomore for us, but we'll sit out this year. Um, and we signed three freshmen, Kiera Lang from Springdale, Arkansas, uh, Daria McCutcheon from the Dallas area, and uh, Ashley Reed from Wichita Falls. So um, a few new players to the roster. Everybody will kind of get familiar with them as we get started, but uh, they'll they'll add to what we already have and then we're going to continue to uh, try to piece together our roster for next year and as we build for the future. All right, Brooke, I appreciate you. Thank you very much. Good luck this season. Thank you. At Louisiana Tech. Now, moving on to Grambling. Players and coaches are still plenty of time to show up here at the Civic Center. The uh, Malcolm Butler from Louisiana Tech told me a few moments ago they sold just over a 1,000 tickets for this event. There's food, there's drink, and there's Bulldogs faithful. And, of course, later tonight, we'll have coverage from ULM, LSU, and Cowboys camp on KTV 10 Sports. Back with more Heather and Jared after the break. Our Chris Demersion joins us live from Starkville, Mississippi, with a preview of tomorrow's big game. Chris, what's it looking like? All right, thanks, Michelle. We're having to move this baby indoors due to rain outside here in the Starkville area. Now, it's been a very, very long time since the last time Louisiana Tech was in a regional. 29 years to be exact. Now, they're facing the Cal State Fullerton squad, who's been in for 25 straight years. No matter the opponent, no matter the arena, no matter the atmosphere, these Bulldogs are ready to play some baseball. Now, Friday's opening round action looks a lot like this. Top seeded Mississippi State will house, or host rather, Southeast Missouri at around 1.30. And in prime time, Louisiana Tech and Cal State Fullerton duking things out at 6.30. Now, before our broadcast at 6 o'clock, Coach Goff came up to me and told me that Philip Deal will indeed start tomorrow night for the uh, Bulldogs. And Coach Vanderhoek, as of a few moments ago, still has yet to announce a starter. But, of course, Fox 14 along KTV 10 will complete updates and recaps throughout the weekend as long as the Bulldogs are playing baseball here in Starkville. Michelle, in the meantime, back to you in the studio. Thank All right, the Bulldogs live to see another day after plating nine runs on 12 hits. But it was Cody Daigle, who was actually out of the starting lineup two weeks ago, who was a big hero for Tech today. Three for four, five RBI, including his grand slam in the bottom of the fourth inning. I'd definitely say this is my best day that I've had in my career. And uh, all credit I give to Coach Goff and Coach Wells for working with me, sticking with me when I was struggling, and uh, just believing in me and all my teammates, of course. Former Sterlington Panther Casey Sutton got the W, pitching seven in the third innings, tossing a season high 122 pitches. Uh, kind of had a thought that ran through my head that said it's going to be a long day. Their coach put a really good approach against me. I mean, like Coach Golf said, they hit me better than any team has all year. Always a good feeling when the bats heat up. Um, when they start hitting around, hitting around, hitting around, it gives me a feeling of comfort and uh, kind of a just lets me settle in and not pitch so timid. The dogs have climbed uphill battles all year, but every time we're able to crawl out of those holes due to this team's never say die attitude. And Saturday was no different. We had a, <clears throat> such a crazy 24 hours um, that we went through to experience, and, and then we get beat one nothing. And these kids never give up. 
especially when their back's against the wall. You've seen them fight all year. There's no coaching involved at all. It's players, it's heart, it's a competitive spirit. In Starkville with the Bulldogs, Chris Immersion, KTV, NBC 10 Sports. Our Chris Immersion ran out there with some bottled water and braved the heat to bring us this story. Chris? Area players out in full force Wednesday morning, showcasing their abilities in front of those who could provide a future for them after high school. It's perfect. You get to learn how to how the SEC coaches on coach, get a better view of everything, get a good um, chance to learn from the college coaches. It means a lot to have like other coaches from other colleges and other states to like take interest into me, even if they're not familiar with this area. The benefits of training sessions like this reciprocates with coaches, giving them a look at talent beyond their backyard. It's well documented, the guys that we have from Louisiana. You know, we start in Texas, and we feel like Louisiana is our, our second home. All you got to do is look at our roster and the guys who are, who are playing for us. We got a bunch of guys from Louisiana. A lot of times you get people from a long distance away, and they, they think about the greater New Orleans area and all that. But, you know, there, there is great football throughout the state of Louisiana, particularly up here in northeast Louisiana. Now, many people agree that events like these bring attention to athletes who normally wouldn't get it. But surprisingly, not everyone in attendance was on board with the idea of a satellite camp. Don't like them at all. I like guys being on our campus and even here in Louisiana until we get guys on our campus. That's where the real, where are you going to go to school? Satellite camps to me are not, they're evaluation camps. And we found one or two guys, uh, uh, you know, wherever we go until they get on our campus, doesn't really matter. In Monroe, Chris Immersion, KTV, NBC 10 Sports.